the pandemic has disrupted a lot of people's lives. I mean, we, we've seen that. It, it has redefined, um, you know, the economy here. Um, I, I'm just curious, though, in terms of the, the role that DTE is playing, uh, ought to be playing here in helping those who have been left behind by this economy and are looking for employment, looking for opportunity here. Sure. So let me start, um, you know, with the, in the early moments of the pandemic, you know, our, our first role was to ensure that our employees would be safe and capable of keeping the lights on and keeping the heat on for our customers. That was our, you know, my first concern. My second concern, you know, within five to seven days after I felt, okay, we've got a plan on how we can keep our people safe and do the work that they do to keep the lights on uh, and keep the heat on uh, was our most vulnerable customers, which is customers in poverty. So many people lost their jobs, started losing their jobs. You know, people are working in restaurants, people are working in small businesses. And uh, what we did at that point is we started working with the Michigan. I personally got involved in daily calls with the Michigan Public uh, Service Commission chair and also the, um, the head of the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. And I said, look, at, this is our time, right? We've got a lot of people who are in desperation right now and cannot have their energy services interrupted. And there's a tremendous amount of federal and state aid that is available, but we have a very bureaucratic process, you know, where it takes 30 to 45 days to get that aid in the customer's hands. And I said, this is our moment to change this. And we streamlined that process so that within five to seven days, we were able to minister federal and state aid uh, to people's energy bills so that their lights and their heat could stay on. And I feel that uh, we really moved heaven and earth in that situation. And so for months and months, uh, our customers that were most desperate were not, never had a loss of power or heat. The second thing that we came, then the third thing that we came to realize, thankfully, is that 40% of the people in Detroit work in small businesses. And all of these businesses were shut down and didn't really have the resources to reopen, like to keep themselves safe and their employees safe, as well as their uh, customers safe. So we started to um, basically, we stood up a call center and a resource center for safety equipment, like masks and hand sanitizers that these small businesses could use, and also procedures on how to conduct themselves and keep themselves safe and their employees safe, as well as uh, their customers and they were able to reopen and people started going back to work, which means income started to flow and, and the desperation started to come out of the community. So we thought that that was really important. The other thing that we did early on is our supply chain people were able to secure masks uh, where, when hospitals could not and uh, firefighters and police uh, departments. And what we did is we distributed over 2 million masks to hospitals and firefighters. So we did a lot uh, to uh, alleviate that concern as well. And then the last thing was uh, really, uh, we started to see that uh, children were gonna really be highly impacted in poor communities uh, when schools got closed uh, in order to protect them from, from the virus. Uh, to the extent that we mobilized an effort to distribute 50,000 tablets. The one thing I didn't know, Bank Hawaii, that uh, really um, struck my heart is that 90% of the kids in Detroit, in the public school system, did not have access to an electronic device. And uh, what we did is we mobilized an effort to get 50,000 tablets in the hands of children so they could continue with their education when the schools were shut down. I mean, kids in the suburbs have one, two, three devices. And here we have 90% of the kids in Detroit without a, a, you know, a personal device that they could use to learn. So we, we remedied that. That was a big deal.